Welcome to Daily Reading the Word for July 27th. I'm Jonathan Kinsler. Today's scripture reading is found in Job chapters 14, 15, and 16, and Acts chapter 23. We're going to be looking at Acts chapter 23, verse 6. The title of this devotional is Hope and Resurrection. Um, and so we pick this up. In Acts 23, verse 6, Paul is on trial, um, and he responds now here in verse 6. But perceiving that one group were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, Paul began crying out in the council, Brethren, I am a Pharisee, a son of Pharisees. I am on trial for the hope and resurrection of the dead. Paul's words here cause a division within his audience that result in Roman troops rescuing him from being torn to pieces. Was Paul wrong in making such an inflammatory, divisive statement in that he was siding with one side of his audience, even against another? Well, we need to understand a few things here in terms of the context. Paul is on trial before a hostile audience that doesn't want to listen to his defense. Their malevolent attitude is clearly revealed by the high priest's order to have him struck for stating that he has walked in integrity up to now. Acts chapter 23 verse 1, he stated that he had lived his life with a perfectly good conscience before God up to this day. Uh, And then the high priest has him struck. Well, Paul couldn't have made a more truthful statement. He had endeavored and was living with a clear conscience before God. The high council had already judged him. He had already judged him as being guilty of death. And so he couldn't make such a such a statement. And so Paul knew that he would not receive a fair hearing. And so Paul changes the focus from the false charges made against him. And we see that in Acts chapter 21, verse uh, to Acts chapter 21, verse 28. This man who preaches to all men everywhere against our people and the law in this place. Uh, and besides, he has even brought Greeks into the temple and has defiled this holy place. That that's what they said he did wrong, which none of those things were were true to the fundamental theological issues that needed to be to be heard. The hope and resurrection of the dead. And I think actually it's a masterful stroke and actually shows that sometimes we need to change the course of directions. We don't always need to go where other people want us to go to. It can where the world and and where they want to take us could be unfruitful and actually even destructive. And so that's why he changes to in order from defending himself to actually proclaiming much more the gospel here. Um, We see, for example, in Acts chapter 4, verse 2, that Peter and John were proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. Paul was not seeking simply to win the support of the Pharisees against the Sadducees, but to return to the centrality of the gospel. Paul regularly comes back to the theme of resurrection. We see this in Acts 24, 14 to 16, in uh, chapter 26, 6 to 8, and verses 22 to 23, and chapter 28, verse 20. He does this over and over, coming back to the resurrection. Israel's hope for the future can only be found in Jesus' resurrection from the dead. But in order to win some to Christ, he revealed his Pharisaic background. Where Pharisaism departed from Christ's salvific provision, however, he rejects it. But they definitely had that in common, that they believed in the resurrection of the dead. Paul also did that as well. And that was a fundamental difference between the Sadducees, who the high priest and the chief priest were a part of, and the Uh, and the Pharisees. The Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection um, at all. And we see that in verse 8 of chapter 23. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, nor an angel, nor a spirit, but the Pharisees acknowledge them all. And so um, Paul here shows that he understands he's not going to get a fair trial from one side, and they're not going to hear what he has to say. But he appeals to the side, though, that may and will listen to him um, in terms of uh, his appreciation for the central theme of Israel's hope, the resurrection of the dead. That's what actually would unite them together. So Paul became even here like his audience without compromising the gospel in order to win some. And that's what he says in 1 Corinthians 9.22, to the weak I became weak that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men so that I may by all means save some. His central purpose was to present the gospel and he looked for ways to do that. And if it was, if 
he wasn't going to be heard on one front, then he would go to another. And that's what we see here uh, happening. Do you keep your focus on the uncompromised gospel, even in the midst of persecution, in the midst of difficulty or opposition? Are you able to understand your audience, becoming like them so that you may win some. It doesn't mean becoming like them in terms of in negative ways, as we've heard, but becoming like them and lining yourself with them in ways that actually uh, bring praise to God. Um, the world is often about good works. There are many things that we can align ourselves with them, uh, but we don't compromise the gospel. And the gospel needs to be our first and main priority in everything that we do. It's our goal. So that's what we need to come front and center. And that's what Paul demonstrates to us by his example. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for, for Paul's example here. And I thank you that we can learn from it and see that, Lord, we need to keep the resurrection, the gospel of Jesus Christ front and center. Uh, and Lord, you will help us to make a way. And we, while not everyone will hear, there are some who will help us to remember that you are in the business of saving. Um, and Lord, that you want to reach people. So help us to understand and appreciate that, Lord, that there we can speak to even some, that we can win even some, and you are the one who are, who are responsible. And help us to walk in your ways, be sensitive, and walk in your wisdom, and follow Paul's example. In your name we pray. Amen.